Yeah. Morning. Right. Morning. Yeah. So we're going to talk about, we wanted to talk about Dion Fortune's book, which I think is the best, one of the best about love and relationships. Um, but it's a little bit old. Yeah. So we're going to annotate it and summarize it in points um, because we think as people who will be counseling people on all sorts of topics to do with life, love and relationships is going to be a very important topic that people want to discuss in yeah. life transitions. Yeah, and I think we said before to be, uh, you call yourself a life transition um, coach, counselor, counselor. Yeah. And I quite like this, and we were talking about the transition. Um, a transition can be a transition through work or relationships or um, into old age or for children. Um, transition is, a, is engaging with the path of life. And part of what we're trying to what we're trying to offer is spiritual knowledge that one can apply to life. And that's what I that's why I love this book by Dion Fortune. But I do think it it needs perhaps a bit of guidance for people to get into. So we'll put the book in the in the, the in the link so that anyone who wants to can actually get this book, um, and a link to us if you want to work with us on some of these subjects. And but I guess the purpose of this video is is to try and bring some of this across so that people can follow it. Yeah. Because transitions means um, each person reaches a threshold in their life. We go through many thresholds. And some of these thresholds have to do with death or illness, loss of work, um, you know, usually involves losses. Um, and in the sphere of love and relationships, it's with just using this book as a guide, I think, to understand the, the deeper levels of this aspect of life which nobody can escape from really as an incarnate human being. Yeah. We come into life through relate through a relationship. Yeah. Or not always. I mean, let's face it. Maybe that's one of the, that's the first like window into this whole subject. Mm -hmm. Not everyone, the sexual act does not always happen within a relationship and it doesn't always happen with love yeah and then you even have um science coming into it these days um of course i think we're so many decades from when dion fortune wrote her book so we won't broach the site you know the scientific developments of how children are brought into into the world but each person usually incarnates through the meeting of a man and a woman yeah and this is also Dion Fortune does write about this because this is the base what she called the base chakra is that we are in male and female bodies and these are in a polarity and without getting into explaining the birds and the bees which are <laughs> which was which was kind of putting me off like when I was doing this video before. But on this, this is part of what she's describing as the different levels where there's positive and negative charges. And on the, the physical level, the two bodies are, are different, male and female. And this is the basis of this, this charge between like in we have an electricity a, a positive attracts a negative and she's taught she's building up this 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 explanation of the different levels of energy according to the kind of magnetism that, that brings these two charges together and on this on the very basic level the question of of that this is how uh this is how human beings reproduce themselves at this yeah. stage in evolution. Um, yeah. And there are seven levels that she addresses, isn't it, Richard? Seven? Is it like uh, corresponding to the seven chakras? Yeah. Yeah. 
And so we'll go through each of those. Yeah, we're going to go through each of those. And this is what we're trying to do is bring examples so that this is relatable. So on the um, and this is all um, before we get we get too far into it. So that's just describing the first level. We're going to go on to the to the seven. But I just wanted to point out that this is going to be part of a three part series. And what I wanted to do at the beginning to help orient ourselves because it's always not just thinking about a possible partner, but it's often, the, I think the key for all of this is recognizing these examples as we, we see them in life, and then reflecting on where are we at in terms of self-knowledge. So it's a question of ourselves and, and the world that we experience. And so as I was doing this, I said, I was saying to myself, this can sound a bit complicated, so let's let's actually ask the tarot to give us a card that can orient us through these these three videos that we're going to do. So this was the. Um, what do you think of that? Before I just start nattering on. You mean the use of the tarot to orient? Yeah. This or, theme? Or, or what I was just saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's. That's that's the way to approach it. We need, yeah. There's the card. Um, the way we are approaching it is to find examples um, to illustrate each of these levels, so that the viewer can reflect upon their lives, their biography, various stages in their lives, in which they found their match at each level, and how many, you know, how far up the levels go and where are we at now so if, if we're somebody who's unpartnered and we want a partner it's helpful to have that self-knowledge where are we at in these levels of energetic matching so so that you don't waste time you know <laughs> meeting up with those who are not going to be at the level that you're working at yeah that's part of your biography yeah. So and this is the the card. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think this is this is the key to recognizing where which level are you at, which what level are you functioning, and also what are you looking to do in your life? What kind and to think more about that's about this coming up to the other levels is is instead of just the instinctive oh you know i like i this person i you know, i quite fancy a bit of that or <laughs> that you're you're actually asking deeper questions um about how you think how the world is put together and this was the card that i got and i think it's you know i tarot never ceases to amaze me yeah the when you actually you ask the spirit for the answer to something <laughs> And this is the card that I was given, and it, this is in German. What this means is the other. The framework mm. is, the, is the other. And Neugier is curiosity. Yeah. So if you Curiosity see, about the other. Yeah, curiosity. And in, in this sense, not the curiosity killed the cat type thing. But like a positive, if we can think of a positive curiosity, because curiosity is different from interest, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at that card. What else do you, would you like to say about how it relates to our scene today? Well, there's many things that, that you could say. I mean, these cards are often quite wise in how they're put together. So I just draw our attention to the wings behind this person, if you see very quite faintly, um, like a butterfly or a fly or um, yeah. an insect. Mm -hmm. wings. That's the first thing. And then secondly, the aspects of, of the water, that something's mirrored in the water. Yeah. And again, this whole question of projection, you know, can I really right. 
can I really see the other or yeah. do I see myself reflected in the other and that's one of the big problems that comes in relationships is can I really see the other or am I just seeing bits of myself projected in the other yeah and so can, think... can can we um show my face now because I'm only when I'm speaking now I'm just seeing the card yeah yeah that's better because then I wanted to raise the subject of the projection of the other the reflection in Jungian psychology it's already you know very deeply discussed and understood the concept of the anima and the animus that each of us has an inner reflection which is the opposite of our outer gender so and then in anthroposophy is described in another way isn't it but it's still we have an like I have an inner masculine Richard has an inner feminine um and part of self-knowledge is getting to know our inner other half yeah yeah sure i mean again i think yeah it's good to come back to like face to face i mean i could i could share the a uh, picture of this from alchemy which shows this very nicely and again this is kind of more ancient uh wisdom about how people when people had more of an imaginative instinctive understanding of this and this is also the picture that i have behind me so this is the bottom of it do you see that mm -hmm. yeah and do you know what that is that's a dragon breathing fire yeah very good and it's an alembic because it's the shape of an egg it's encircled yeah it's an alchemical symbol let me take me out of the way so there so you see the i don't know if you can see all of it but the you have a kind of sphere a globe like spherical object and mm -hmm. you have the um you have the within it you have a triangle with four and three and then you have the dragon and someone's standing on the dragon yep sorry i've got a dragon meowing at me um <laughs> but i'll just show you uh what i've got is i'll just show you the full thing and I'm, i'll just show you quickly and then we come back to to speaking um but right. I think it's good because it's, it's so good. this alchemical symbol um who is the who is the artist from what century do you know I don't, I you don't know 15th 15th uh, century or something like that okay but, yeah so here I, what's important is this is quite a nice visual representation for us to orient when we're talking about the unfortunes book because mm -hmm. we're looking with the seven planets we've got the relation to the seven sh chakras from the the base chakra up i won't describe them all but going all the way up to the yep. seventh um and here we've got in the in the old days this was a science yeah and it still is a science but yep. it's covered up because they all want us to buy pharmaceutical product products i'll just <laughs> <laughs> we could go down that rabbit hole yeah, yes we don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now <laughs> and we might get taken off YouTube. yes so anyway um but we don't want to go into that but this is you see there's a deep wisdom in this imagery because it's drawing our relation to man and woman as one being Mm -hmm. in a higher sense that you are masculine and feminine as one in a higher sense and again we'll yep. probably go so far as to get into that more philosophical subject but sun and moon that they saw the relation between between the elements nature itself so again this is not this is not theoretical knowledge this is about real living natural forces and energies and here we have then of course the the square and the compass that we are learning to orient in our knowledge how all this fits together yeah 
So it's a reference to this symbology and alchemy of the inner, the, the oneness of the masculine and the feminine that each of us has, combining the principles in that with what Dion Fortune has to share about the seven chakras. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. what's really helpful is the dragon. So we've got a kind of what we'll call the alembic is how we're slowly learning to, to more inwardly develop spiritual knowledge to understand these things. The dragon, very much the lower nature. Now, without getting into to judging this, this is what we were saying at the beginning with level one and now just moving on to level two. Level two or the, the, this chakra in the in the stomach in the middle this is about our, again she describes that instead of a polarity the next level up you find unity and this is where you both have a unity of desire for the other which means you'll end up going home in a taxi with them so that would so that's um if we're talking about seven chakras that would be the sacral chakra not solar plexus yet right yeah the one below the solar plexus yeah yeah okay. so mm -hmm. that and you can again without getting theoretical about it just go into one your own experience yeah and maybe maybe it's a long time back or <laughs> maybe yeah, so, so, so we're now we're now speaking to the audience to self-reflect about yeah. experiences of this kind of attraction from that chakra. Yeah, to, to, yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's yeah, that's that's really that's really good to 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 say it like that because like I. So basically, guiding each one of us. I mean, including ourselves to self-reflect. Yeah. On our on various stages of our biography and how we relate it to these concepts of love, Absolutely. attraction, repulsion, relationship, bonding. Absolutely. And I, I just I always like this, you know, I this example, that's why I'm saying to go home in a taxi with each other, because I remember back, you know, for for me and for many people who grew up in, in the UK, and I guess in many places, it's Friday night. On Friday night, you get yourself all dressed up. Um, you you get ready. You put the music on, you know, and you're going out there. And you're you. It's not your goal. I mean, a lot of the time, it's like seeing your mates and stuff, you yeah? know. Or going when I was when I was younger, it was going out to raves and dancing all night. But um. But other times you didn't want to go out to a rave or something. And you you were that attraction to see someone. You think, oh, yeah, she looks nice. Or, you, you know, you, you you fancy someone. It's that. Now, this can still, it doesn't have to be when you're just a teenager or something. This can, this is also later in life, all the way through life. I mean, people. Yeah. The difference being teenagers, <laughs> adolescents is, is the hormones. Because the yeah. hormones kick in yeah. at puberty, and then there's kind of no stopping what you know that whole process. Sure, but you've got all these Hollywood films as well about you know people in old people's homes who who get get into that too, and so it's always a possibility. With the help of pharmaceuticals, possibly, oh, yeah. yeah. But it's <laughs> it's like saying, yeah, this this just recognizing. I think everyone can recognize this, even if it's. It, even if when you get older, perhaps this this is less um, vibrant, let's say. Um, but that's that second level. And I think from this to understand the unfortunate this and this philosophy and understanding better. It's important to understand the difference between the polarity, which she's describing between the two bodies and how on this level you have a unity of of instinctual desire and that that's they have to be equal you have to equally want to go back in that taxi mm -hmm. right so there's yeah so it's a kind of it has to match energetically at that level yeah, yeah. exactly and then 
And then what's the next level up would be the solar plexus. Well, the next level is the solar plexus. And again, you can feel this. Think of when you get emotional, emotional about something. That's different from, I mean, going in the taxi, end of the night, you had a few drinks. That's different to engaging in a relationship where, and this is where she talks about one who has sympathy to give and one yeah. who's in need. Yeah. Now, again, yeah. Um, to, to think about this, when you've fallen in love with someone, when, you, again, you think of different examples, but what was it? You, it's quite, it's something difficult to define. What was it you felt that somebody, either you're somebody who likes to care on, this is about on this level, okay? Mm. One who likes to care or somebody who's, who needs that care. Yeah. And it can also yeah. be reciprocal. It can be, it can change and that energy can move around. So I'm not saying anything's fixed here, but mm. if all of your energy is on this uh, so the plexus level you're orienting in your life toward being someone who can care on being someone who perhaps is in need of that care and that awakens that feeling of love mm -hmm. i think this is very for me this is a, this is fantastic and very fascinating because she also describes this is how most relationships are yeah now yeah yeah is, because if we if we look at uh, historically, if we look back one generation to our parents, two generations to grandparents and further back, um, people related and entered marriages or partnerships based on the first three chakras. But then now in our more conscious, especially conscious the soul incarnations that some of us are in, <laughs> hopefully, um it's it's a different dynamic isn't it because if we think oh yeah how many of we know okay our, our mom and dads yeah they cared for each other they related on a certain level i can give the example of my parents for example um so they raised three children were very responsible parents um and then both of them were deeply spiritually seeking people so my my mother did her own spiritual path, which was Buddhism, and my father kept searching many different, uh, you know, religious and spiritual paths. So they they so they no longer only interacted on the caring social solar plexus level. It went up, but that's you know not all couples are like that. But my parents were. Sure. And I think, you know, that's what I'd like to um, also come to in, in the second part. Mm. I think it's a good, a good point to draw, draw that to draw this, this part to a close on that. And then next, next part, we'll look into what does it mean to come up from the, that, 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 um, that kind of relationship into, into the level of, of the heart chakra because this is very much about what Dion Fortune describes as a building, building a life together, yeah, with many different shared understandings, many different etheric habits, uh, and that's that kind of shared understanding. And she also describes it as something. She gives a very interesting example that it's a level where two students might come together because they're interested in the same subject and that's another way of looking at it that if you're going to have a long-term uh relationship with someone you're orienting yourself really is i mean it's like the old the the ad, old adage adage in society um that you should be friends with someone um for that to be a sustainable long-term commitment to each other and you see, in a wonderful way, this is how that energy from, from the heart can flow down into that care. Because there's a friendship and an interest in the other, not just to consume them, but to uh, reciprocate. That's how that energy from the heart flows down into that third 
into that third chakra. So you see that this is how the spirit is is slowly growing in us as we as we rise up and develop away from that kind of dragon nature of of the the base and, and the more instinctual drives. Mm. I think from the heart chakra, the quality of compassion and empathy for the other um, is accentuated because I think there's something about the heart chakra um, around that area. There's a new spiritual organ that's developing, isn't there? Steiner yeah, says. Absolutely. And this very yeah. it comes back to our the card that we had the other day about empathy. Mm. Is empathy in its in another sense we could say okay empathy for the other but interest in the world you need to have empathy to actually want to learn more about life so that on a very broad sense is that opening more opening of of the heart chakra in the middle of 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 man and and woman yeah and also it the heart chakra is the place where the chalice yeah is developed and this beautiful concept of the chalice is like a bowl and it holds um processes so that this chalice let's say you're you're out of your interest to not just one other but other people connected to you through karma you with your empathy and your compassion you naturally want to help or share with more than just one and more are invited to the chalice and then we have we have then the christ comes in to work with the processes within this chalice of empathy and compassion that's how i perceive this heart chakra area what do you think richard well that's good you kind of just you kind of described in a nutshell everything that we'll talk about in the next Oh, so sorry. it's good i mean it's it's a good it's a good showcase of your um abilities but it's an intro it's yeah i mean but this is some of those topics of the chalice and, and community and some of those deeper esoteric uh topics we'll get into that in the next one so i Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish this off for, for today and then we'll try and do up as soon as possible part two. Well, what about uh, the other chakras going from the throat? We leave that for another time or? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Those yeah. will come in the, in the next There's one. We're going to go because mm. we've only just touched on the, the heart chakra. So we'll, we'll talk about level four, which is the heart chakra. And then we'll talk about also the throat chakra, mm. third eye and the crown so those that's what will come to yeah you. that's good